This investigation is sponsored by Skillshare. The first 500 Templin Institute personnel to use the link in the description will get two months of Skillshare Premium free. It's difficult to deny that the vast majority of stormtroopers seem to be two-dimensional caricatures who mindlessly follow the Empire, often to their own deaths. They are typically cruel and seem to take pleasure in needlessly intimidating both their own citizens and their own subordinates. Were there no stormtroopers in the Imperial Army who possessed a sophisticated and complex sense of morality? A soldier whose loyalty to the Empire came not from the threat of violence, but a true belief in the principles and guiding vision of the regime? The best officers in any army are those who empathize with those under their command and lead by example. Was there nobody like that in the Imperial Army? Was it not possible to be a person of moral fortitude while serving the Empire? The New Republic didn't seem to think so. After their victory at the Battle of Jakku, every single surviving Imperial officer was designated a war criminal and in this, I believe, the New Republic committed a terrible violation of its own pursuit of justice. On this episode of Incoming, we ask the question, why would anyone fight for the Galactic Empire? And of those who did, what motivated them? And how did they reconcile their actions? Was it possible to be both a good person and a loyal Imperial soldier? At the height of its power, the Galactic Empire trained and mobilized billions of stormtroopers and other service members across its various military branches. What I would argue, and what the New Republic apparently failed to consider, is that among these men and women were people trying to live up to noble intentions, or choosing to do terrible things for what they considered the greater good. This does not excuse their crimes, but it does give us greater insight into why so many were loyal to an unforgiving and often cruel regime. So why exactly would a person of good character faithfully serve the Galactic Empire? Well, we don't need to look very far. In both our own universe and a multitude of others, support for autocratic governments usually arises from the same set of factors. The first is a prevailing fear of an external threat. The founding of the Empire took place shortly before the defeat of the Confederacy of Independent Systems, and conditions created by the Clone Wars, the first major conflict in millennia, were perfect. Faced with the seemingly imminent possibility of a separatist invasion, and later the betrayal of the Jedi Order, many were all too willing to trade personal liberty for security and safety. Eventually, the threat of the Separatists and the Jedi was supplanted by the threat of the Alliance to Restore the Republic, a rebellion working to destroy the new order promised by Emperor Palpatine. Which leads us to the second major factor behind the rise of an authoritarian state, a cult of personality. As the man responsible for leading the Republic against the Confederacy, Palpatine presented himself as a leader who was bold, decisive, uncompromising, and even ruthless when necessary. Given the perilous state of the galaxy at the time of the Empire's founding, loyalty to such a man would not be unreasonable. Some went even so far as to suggest the Emperor possessed supernatural powers, which, if nothing else, speaks to the image he cultivated in the minds of his citizens. Now, while many other factors such as nationalism, militarism, and theatricality can help win the support of an otherwise educated and moral citizenry, the last I'd like to focus on is an ideal that is often claimed solely by the Rebellion. Hope, and the belief in a better tomorrow. The Galactic Empire took power in an era when the galaxy was recovering from a devastating war, and for many, the Empire represented the best chance at a more peaceful and prosperous galaxy. Where there was ruin and devastation, the Empire promised to rebuild. Where there was famine, it brought food, and where there was poverty, it created opportunity. A Grand Admiral in the Imperial Navy once remarked, day after day, year after year, on thousands of worlds, people live their lives under Imperial rule without seeing a stormtrooper or hearing a TIE fighter scream overhead. Is it any wonder that the people on those worlds benefiting from the Empire might be willing to lay down their lives and defend it, and perhaps be a little more willing to overlook the methods used by the Empire to maintain their rule? My point is this. When an Imperial perspective of the Galactic Civil War is presented, the same story is told again and again and again. A citizen who truly believes in the Empire serves their nation faithfully, until inevitably, they witness the darker side of Imperial power, and in that moment they grow disillusioned. They resign or defect, and eventually find themselves fighting against the power they once served. The New Republic has ample reason not to share the more nuanced examples of Imperial citizenry. It is far more comfortable to paint the Empire as a regime made up of evil automatons, 
and the occasional naive individual just waiting for the chance to make the right choice, betray the Empire, and defect. It is more difficult to admit that under specific circumstances, good people can faithfully serve an evil regime, that soldiers with a strong moral sense when ordered to commit atrocities can do so with little hesitation. This is not only more interesting, it is more believable. No matter how much you might want to pretend otherwise, beneath the helmet of every stormtrooper was a man or woman capable of great good or great evil, sometimes simultaneously. Somewhere during the Galactic Civil War, there was a soldier in the Imperial Army, a person of noble conscience who, when forced to decide between the life of his friends and his loyalty to the Empire, chose the Empire. Somewhere there was a technician who, in her service to the Empire, helped restore infrastructure and opportunity to worlds in the Outer Rim that had been ignored by the Republic for centuries. Someone who never forgave the Rebellion for destroying everything she'd worked for. Somewhere, there was an Imperial officer that, when his regiment was ordered over the top of their trenches, was the first man to do so. Not out of fear of reprisal should he refuse, but out of love for those under his command, for his family, and for the Empire. Instead, in the stories presented to us, humanizing Imperial soldiers is always done in the same way, at the expense of their loyalty to the Empire. People can be more complicated than that. This is not to say that the Galactic Empire was anything other than an evil regime, which, in its relentless pursuit of power, committed terrible crimes. I only mean that in the end, the Galactic Empire was simply a government, one made up of hundreds of billions of people. To suggest that every single one was a faceless cartoon character dedicated to the triumph of evil and every exception would eventually realize their mistake and defect to the rebellion is a fallacy. There must exist somewhere stories of emotionally and morally complex Imperial soldiers, people who could make the wrong choice for the right reasons, and I would like to finally see one. But that of course is just my opinion, and even though I am infallible, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Was the Empire wholly made up of two-dimensional stereotypes? Is there an instance of an Imperial officer or soldier who managed to be a good person without defecting? Could I someday maybe change my mind about something? Until then, if you're a writer or world builder looking to make your own characters a little more memorable than Faceless Stormtrooper TK2289, our sponsor Skillshare can help you out. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of classes, including courses that cover every aspect of creative writing. Learn how to craft a character-driven story, brush up on the fundamentals of writing, or improve your expertise in hundreds of other fields. We'd recommend Storytelling Fundamentals, Character Conflict, Context, Craft by author Daniel Jose Older, who wrote Star Wars Last Shot and Born in the Storm, a Stormtrooper-centric story featured in the short story anthology From a Certain Point of View. For less than $10 a month, Skillshare can help you build your current skills or learn completely new ones, unlock new opportunities, and do your best work. The first 500 Templin personnel who sign up for Skillshare using the link in the description will receive two free months of unlimited classes. So what are you waiting for? Your empire needs you.